Many weeks throughout this past year, Pastor Nizzi and I have met to talk about how my time at Good Shepherd has been going. In these conversations, she always asks me questions about what I got out of the worship services or the activities I led with the youth. She would ask me to think about when I felt closest to God during worship or my time with the youth. And these were always questions I could answer as I took time to reflect on the week I had just completed. Nizzy's good at always asking questions, some of you might know. But there was one question that I always knew she was going to ask each week. I hoped I could avoid it, but she would always look at me and say, Pastor Lauren, how is your spiritual life? How is your prayer life? And I would think, oh no, she caught me. I would hide my face or I would look away and I would think I thought I could avoid this question this week. But she never let me get away with that. She knew that this was the one question that I needed to hear each week. And she knew that I needed her to keep me accountable in my spiritual life. My answer often went something like this. It's not been very good. I haven't spent a lot of time in prayer. I've just, I've been too busy. This was always such a hard conversation to have. Who wants to tell their pastor or their supervisor that they really haven't been in relationship with God lately? Not me. But Pastor Nizzi continually asked me this question because she knew that I needed to be reminded to rely on God, to remain in Jesus and to trust in the Holy Spirit. I do not always seek out Jesus as a priority. And when I don't seek him out, I am missing out on a sustaining relationship that could help me in the busyness of my life. I'm missing out on doing my best to bear fruit so that the youth and my family and my friends might see God in me. So we come to the scripture today in John 15, where Jesus is making an I am statement. In this I am statement, he is trying to get the disciples to understand the importance of seeking after him. Jesus makes a lot of these statements. He says, I am the bread of life and the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Last week, Paul reminded us that Jesus is the good shepherd. And today, in our scripture passage, we hear Jesus tell his disciples that he is the true vine. But this story is not just about Jesus. It is about how God and Jesus work together to produce good fruit through us, through you and through me. Jesus says that his father is the vineyard keeper, the one responsible for taking care of the vine. God is responsible for pruning us and preparing us to produce fruit so that we can live lives that glorify God. Jesus says, remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Jesus is reminding us that we are to bear fruit as followers of him, but that we cannot do it alone. We should remain in relationship with him so that we might bear fruit. But then when we hear verse 5, which is written up here on the screen, we might be caught off guard by the pointed words of Jesus, especially words that these words as they follow words of hope that say, remain in me and I will remain in you. But here Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will produce fruit. But then he says, without me, you can't do anything. These are strong words coming from Jesus. And they almost sound like a threat. But we should think about the context of his words before we get too scared. Who is Jesus originally declaring this message to and why? Jesus is talking to his disciples before he is arrested. He is preparing the disciples for when he leaves and when he is no longer with them. He is saying, stick with me, because even though I won't always be present with you, you can still remain in me and I in you. He is reminding them that they must have an ongoing relation with him, relationship with him through the Holy Spirit, which God promises to send them. 
Jesus is warning the disciples not to stray or be discouraged because he knows how easy it is for the disciples and even for us to stray from him. We often don't want to abide in Jesus. We want to do things on our own terms. It is easier and less painful to try to do things on your own than to be pruned. Being pruned and changed for the better is a painful process, and it is not one that we always want to go through. We don't want our flaws exposed, but Jesus is reminding us that we should stick close to him and we should rely on him. And so we realize that this vine and branch relationship that Jesus is telling us about is one of dependence, not independence. A Massachusetts pastor by the name of Bruce Epperly points this out when he says, Although the vine is the source and life of energy, the branches are not passive. They must participate in the fruitfulness of their other branches. There is an intimate interdependence between God and us. When we remain in Jesus and are fruitful, we glorify God and spread his word to others. Bearing fruit is not easy, though. It means that we must commit to being in relationship with Jesus, and that we must admit that we need Jesus in our lives. It means that we claim Jesus as our support and God as the one who continually gives us life. We respond to God's care for us as the vineyard keeper by bearing fruit in the places that God calls us to. For we are called, as verse 8 says, to bear much fruit and become disciples. We are called to be disciples of Christ, proclaiming the gospel to the world. But we have to stick close to Christ to do this effectively. So maybe at this point you're thinking, okay, I know I need to rely on Jesus and remain close to him, but that's really hard to do. It is hard to always rely on God. It is hard to always pray and read the Bible. And it's hard, let's be honest, to bear fruit, especially when that fruit involves being patient or loving when we don't want to. So how? How do I stay connected to the vine? Seeking community and living in community with others is one of the best ways to stay connected to the vine, to Jesus. We are called to bear fruit, but we are not called to do this alone. Pastor Nizzi continually keeps me accountable to being in relationship with God, and her reminders help me to seek God more earnestly and more passionately. And we all need people who do this for us. And sometimes we lift people up and support them in their walks with Christ. A pastor named Caroline Lewis acknowledges the importance of community when she says, bearing fruit has everything to do with who you are in relationship with. Our faith is not defined only by our own individual, individual relationship with God and our beliefs about God. Our faith is deeply influenced by the people and communities in our lives. Bearing the fruit of our faith is completely dependent on being in relationship with others who have faith and are seeking to bear fruit. Together we are all seeking to remain in Jesus and we are able to support one another in this process as different branches that are all a part of the same vine. And I could not agree with Caroline Lewis more. I believe in my own experiences that the time when I am in a loving community with other Christians are the times I am most connected with God. My sophomore year of college, I lived in a house called Bonhoeffer House. It is an intentional community named after a German theologian named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He wrote a book called Life Together, and he emphasized the importance of Christians being together in community as a critical part of our faith. And the eight people who lived with me in Bonhoeffer House sought to lift each other up and encourage each other in our relationship with Christ. We read the Bible and shared prayer requests and prayed together each weekday morning. We built intentional relationships with one another that allowed us to lift each other up, to help each other to be changed for the better. And here at Good Shepherd, we are called to teach and nurture each other. This past year, you all have been my Christian community, a community that has challenged me to grow in my relationship with God and to love myself and others better. The Good Shepherd Youth Group has also certainly been a sustaining part of my faith life this year. The youth have, can, have pushed me to continually seeking my relationship with God so that I might be able to better lead them. And I have been challenged by the questions they ask and the knowledge they have of God. 
I now invite a few youth up, Becca, Bethan, Angela, Karina, and Nicolina. Two weeks ago, when we were on our youth retreat at the Cape, I asked the youth to fill in the blanks on sentences like, I believe in God because, and I like coming to youth group because. These questions were asking them to think more deeply about who they are as they rely on God to lead them, and who they are as a part of this youth group. They're a group of individuals who are seeking God, but they're also seeking to be in community with one another and to support one another. So now, hear these words. I am outgoing and friendly. I am quiet and polite and tough. I am compassionate and outspoken. I am a follower of the Lord. I am funny and athletic. I am beautiful and courageous. I believe in God because he is real. I believe in God because he created everything around us. I come to Good Shepherd on Sunday because I like to be with our church family and worship God. I come to Good Shepherd on Sundays because it makes me feel closer to God. I worry about disappointing the people in my life. I worry about my family. I worry about my GPA and my future. I hope for success, love, security, and to be comfortable. I hope for the best lives of my family and my friends. I hope for everybody to be equal and happy. I like doing youth activities at Good Shepherd United Methodist Church because everyone is fun and we share a love for God. I like doing youth activities because they help me understand more about God. I like doing youth activities because it brings all of us together as a community. I dream of happiness. I dream of getting into heaven. I dream of going far in life. I dream of a world where nobody is alienated and everyone smiles. Thank you all. I have been so blessed to be with the youth of Good Shepherd this year, to hear their hopes and dreams and fears, and to be a part of a community that is seeking to remain in God and to abide by Jesus. I've been able to teach them, but I have also most certainly been able to learn from them. I have learned about the way they seek to be in relationship with God and the places where they struggle. And I've seen them build community each week with each other as they continue to get to know each other here at Good Shepherd. They are an example of the way community can help us to grow in our relationship with Christ as we learn from one another and hold each other accountable. So as we leave here today, I pray that each individual at Good Shepherd would seek to be pruned and changed by God. And together as a community, I pray that the branches of this church would reach out beyond the front doors of this church into the wider communities that we live in and around the world, because we are bound together by our faith in Jesus, and we are sent out because we are followers of Christ who remain pruned and attached to the living vine. As each of you think about how you're a part of this Good Shepherd community, I want you to think about your prayers and hopes and dreams for this community. We just heard some of the youth's dreams and hopes for their lives and for this Good Shepherd community, and so if you would please take some time to write down a prayer or a dream or a hope that you have. When you have written down your prayer or dream or hope, if you would come up to the vine up here around the cross, the pastors, Pastor Nizzi and I, and some of the youth will help you to pin your hope up on the vine. And I hope that this vine will represent the hope we have for our community, a community that abides in Jesus. If you do not have a piece of paper, if you did not get one when you came in, we have some extras. And whenever you're ready, after you have answered this question, you may come up and pin your vine up on, or your prayer up on the vine. 